everyone. Thank you for joining us to talk about best practice today. Um, today's presentation is basically a 60 minute talk crammed into 30 minutes. So check the session page for a handout with a rubric to follow as we work through our session today. Um, but before I get too ahead of myself, we should probably introduce ourselves. I'm Emily, this is Bryson. Bryson, Hello. tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how you feel about best practice. Well, I'm Bryson Terrell. Uh, at the moment, I'm a staff systems development engineer on the API platform team here at Jamf. I've been here for getting close to 10 years now. And when I started out, um, I was the Casper admin at this company in, in the days before it was called Jamf Pro. So um, when I came up in Jamf, um, I liked to experiment a lot, and that led to some interesting hard-learned lessons about simplicity over cleverness and striving for straightforward solutions than over-engineered ones. And those, uh, to me, learning those lessons led to um, uh, the mentality I have today about always trying to keep things simple. Yeah. and. Uh... I also work at Jamf. I'm Jamf's Apple Enterprise Management Engineer, which means I am Jamf's current Jamf admin. And before joining Jamf, I started with the Casper suite and then worked through to Jamf administration at other organizations as Jamf Pro grew and changed over the years. Um, and I think best practice comes up a lot because we all like finding the best, most efficient, simplest, most straightforward, way to achieving our goals and doing our jobs. I mean, I know I do. Uh, and I don't think I'm the only one. I don't think it's just Bryson and I that care about simplicity. Um, he and I got talking about this topic one day because we see it all the time on Slack, Jamf Nation, Reddit, et cetera. Uh, best what's the best practice for X? Or what can I read about for best practice for Y? Stuff like is there a checklist for standard configuration best practice items? Um, other best practice configure for configuration profiles for zero touch for you know a myriad of things, um, and these things tend to pop up around some common scenarios that we've noticed. Uh, two common scenarios, like the first one here, you've joined a new company and are tasked with taking over their Jam Pro server, which congrats, much, by the much way. Much like how Emily job. took over mine. <laughs> it's true, I did. Um, and I've lived through this scenario a few times. And every time you do it, you sit and you think, how do I tackle what's here? How do I get a sense of established management approach? Or you know, how do I find opportunities to implement best practice without just feeling overwhelmed? Um, basically, yeehaw, time to wrangle Jam Pro instance. Uh, there's tons to it. What do we do? Well, and then we've got scenario two, which is the green field. You've been tasked with configuring a brand new Jamf Pro instance. It's the dream scenario. The world is your burrito. Um, but Jamf Pro really can do so much. So for for uh, starting out net new, especially if you're a new to admin, where do you even start? So what if? there was a framework for approaching best practice in Jamf Pro. We think there can be, and we're here today to propose one. So what's on our agenda? We're talking about best practice. We've already touched a bit on you know, what we think about it and why we're passionate about it. But we're also big fans of sessions that leave you with something you can try at the end. So today we're going to take kind of a systematic approach. We're going to model going through Jamf Pro and following a framework that you can use to establish best practice for yourself and your, your company or organization. Um, as we go through our best practice framework, we're going to focus on two main categories. Best practice for Jamf Pro's core components and then how to maintain that best practice that you put in place. And check the session page for links and handouts. We'll have a handout with a rubric that you can follow for yourself to go through this practice with your own Jam Pro server. All right, we have a lot to cover. Let's get started. 
The best practice framework we're going to talk through today is made up of two main categories, like I mentioned. First category is all about what we consider Jampro's four core components. Management, organization, deployment, and settings. The other side of this is going to be all the non jampy stuff, but it's still really important to Jampro management. Uh, these topics are going to include documentation and data, maintenance and cleanup, change management, you can't escape it, and then finally, the all-important toolbox. So we're going to do our best. We're going to talk best practice. Let's dig in. Let's dig in. <laughs> we'll kick off our best practice game planning with a look at Jamfro's core components, starting with management. When we talk about management today, we're talking about, in particular, about policies and profiles. Policies and profiles do the heavy lifting to apply settings, install apps, run scripts, and perform other management actions on devices. So remember scenario one, the tag your it scenario, <laughs> the yeehaw partner scenario. Our rubric starts with looking at these management pieces in Jamf Pro to audit what's in place and find opportunities for improvement. So we're gonna model scenario one as we go through this today. Policies are a great place to start when you need to familiarize yourself with what's already configured in a Jamf Pro server. At a glance, you get to see how are things generally named? What's the approach to scoping? How are things categorized? Let's see what we can learn from this policy. It's named in a clear and human readable way. It contains an action and an object and it avoids abbreviations that can cause confusion. Nice. The frequency is ongoing with a defined trigger. So this policy is likely called by trigger in other policies. Seems reasonable. You may want to track down where that happens and why. Why is it in the enrollment category? Maybe this is your first opportunity to address some category logic. How about a few more examples? Here are some more policies in our previously configured Jamf Pro that are worth looking at. This policy looks like the standard daily inventory collection, but it doesn't need multiple triggers. One day on a check, one as every day on a check-in trigger should suffice. Leaving orphaned policies without a category is sad. If a policy is important enough to be in your server, it should be categorized. Naming a policy after a ticket makes sense from an administrative standpoint, but it's not very friendly for future admins or auditors that may not have access to your ticketing system. If it's helpful to have the ticket number in a policy title, definitely have it there, but also add a friendly title for the rest of us. Naming uh, or having a category called policies and then putting policies in policies probably means the admin that set this up previously was a big fan of Christopher Nolan's film Inception or that gif of Spider-Man pointing at himself. You know, the one. Uh, more opportunities here to improve organization. And note that the scope here doesn't really have a desired state. It's great that they have some value, like all computers, all managed servers. Those are things that you care about. But maybe up-to-date Macs don't need to try to install all available updates every day. Just a thought. And check-in probably makes more sense for the trigger than network state change. So, quick for All right, so we want to add triggers to policies. Uh, triggers are so handy for so many reasons. Uh, there's no risk in adding them to policies and calling policies on a trigger in a pinch can be very helpful to, you know, especially help desk folks who need to just run something around the spot. Uh, here's a tip to Def find a naming style for your triggers and stick with it, like making them camel case or com combining the vendor and the app name or, you know, sticking with dashes or underscores instead of mixing and matching, you know, whatever you do, uh, document it, use it consistently. Uh, how many policies does a typical application need? Uh, we, we think about three, um, installing, updating and uninstalling. Uh, make sure you have a plan to, you know, at the least, keep any app that you deploy updated on an ongoing basis. Keep packages on as few policies as you can. Um, have the latest version of an app in the primary install policy, 
add a trigger. Uh, call that trigger in any other policy that needs to install that app so you're not replicating that package object all over the place. Uh, you then have only one policy that you need to actually swap that package job when you need to put in a uh, newer version. And you, don't, you don't have to do it on two or three or seven. Uh, check the links um, for a post that discusses this topic in more depth. Uh, if you have scripts that require credentials, like uh, calling an API for some reason, do not store those credentials in your scripts. Do not make them plain text in policy variables. Uh, that's why you leak credentials. Um, if you, if you need to, find ways to obfuscate those secrets or there, find ways to avoid those workflows entirely and do that processing somewhere else. And then organize policies based on their value and their purpose. Uh, think enrollment, scheduled deployments, uh, security, remediation. We'll get into categories a little bit later here. Cool. So that was policies. Let's talk about profiles. Profiles are another important piece of the management puzzle, and they can do a lot. But should one do a lot all by itself? Probably not. There are lots of payloads available for configuration profiles for Macs and mobile devices, and a whole lot of preferences within them. But with great power comes great responsibility. Our best practice tip don't overload a single profile with every setting a client might need. Break that stuff up into different profiles so that it's easier to see at a glance what a profile does. Think mini Oreo instead of double stuff. Or, you know, regular Oreos if you prefer regular Oreos too. Um, but to add some color to this, we have a link uh, to an Apple support article um, in our handouts and at the end of the session here. And it's important to call out some of the text on there, which is, if you have multiple configuration profiles containing similar payloads with different settings, the resulting behavior is undefined, red flag. And for iPhones and iPads, if there are conflicting restrictions, the most restrictive restriction wins. So going back to my thought train from the beginning about simplicity, um, and also what Emily just said about uh, keeping profiles bite-sized and single purpose. Uh, don't have conflicts exist in multiple profiles. Keep you know certain preferences and settings in the domain of one profile, and then don't end up in a situation where your end, your end state is undefined and you don't know what the outcome will be. It might be different across clients. So our handy list of some profile best practices. We already touched on some with what Bryson was discussing with mismatches and trying to keep things streamlined, but name profiles clearly and concisely. Make it easy to tell at a glance what a profile does and what you want it to do. Add descriptions to your profiles. Profiles in Jam Pro have a field for a description so that you can easily add more information about what a profile does and why. Make useful profile descriptions a part of your best practice. We briefly touched on this, but scope for what a device is, what a device is not. Scope based on value. This will help immensely with reviewing profiles and knowing what they should be doing. So down here, signing custom profiles, um, you can generate profiles outside of Jamf Pro. Um, there's tools, there's apps for that. And, but when it comes time to upload them, uh, we recommend that you sign those first. So that way, when it is uploaded, um, they aren't going to be altered or modified by Jam Pro after the fact. Um, you can do signing with the built-ins uh, CA certificate. You can do it with an Apple developer certificate. Uh, there's going to be another link uh, at the end of this presentation uh, for a uh, blog about how to do that. All right. And again, getting back to don't overdo it, don't over administer. Um, the uh, set the minimum requirements for your devices to be compliant for your organization. Um, set desired state and let your end user do the rest. You know, don't be clever. Don't be me. Don't be overly clever, because that just makes <laughs> things complicated later. And we like keeping things simple here. All right, so we talked management, policies and profiles. The next step is to look at how a Jam Pro instance is organized. Um, 
How it's organized and how well it's organized can tell you a lot about management priorities for enrolled devices and how they're administered. For our best practice framework, organization includes smart and static groups, advanced searches, and categories. So let's take a look at some example groups to see where we have opportunities to implement some best practice. Um, we've mentioned a few times that it's much easier to look at a group for what a device is, what its value is, as opposed to what it is not, what it's lacking. Positives are easier for the human mind to process and comprehend than negatives. I learned that from Bill Smith. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Save that brain power for something more fun, like your giant Lego kit or calculating how much yarn you need for that crochet project. Those may sound very specific. They are. Anyway. That is an oddly specific Here. example. Uh, yeah, I may be pulling from personal experience there. Anyway, um, here we see a no Slack group. Chances are the value you care about is if a device has Slack. Either you do want devices to have Slack or you want to remove it from devices that have it. Naming it no Slack can create double negatives when it comes to using the group for scoping exclusions. And that just hurts the brain. So try not to do that. Um, if you really need to know, no Slack, make an advanced search and save it for reporting purposes. There's also this executives group. I didn't realize devices could be executives. That's kind of cool. Um, the group title is just missing a description of what it actually contains. I would either call it executive mobile devices, executive iPads, executive Apple TVs, or just make it an advanced search if you just need it for reporting purposes. And not to harp on this too much, but um, Groups are for scoping, not reporting. Groups are recalculated nearly continuously. Alternatively, advanced searches are calculated on demand. So if a group isn't needed to scope a policy or profile, give your poor Jamf Pro server a break. Make it into an advanced search so it's not having to recalculate it basically constantly. The last piece of the organization puzzle we'll touch on here is naming conventions. Tip, have one. Bring in Bill Smith back. He has a great talk from JNUC 2017 where he defines effective methods for naming among other things, which are all great. Um, some of this you've already heard from us today. We agree with his recommendations and we'll just highlight a few things real quick before we move on. Um, policy and script names, name them for what they do. Use verbs followed by objects. Package names, include the developer name, Include the full application title, include the version, and try to avoid abbreviations because abbreviations can be confusing. And spaces are fine in package names. And for extension attribute and group names, name them for what they describe or contain. The type of device is probably assumed, so you can leave that out. Use adjectives or nouns. And identify things that exist. Identify what value the device has that you care about. Try to avoid the negatives or what's lacking. All right, so we talked about management, we talked about organization, let's look at deployment. What do we mean by deployment? Here are some examples. How do devices come into management and how is software installed? Are new devices being enrolled automatically? Are profiles and policies scoped to all computers the minimum requirements for compliance and desired state? Or have you thrown in the kitchen sink too? Hopefully not. Um, is the enrollment experience awesome? And what does awesome mean to you for your organization, for your company? And is self-service being utilized effectively? So we've got some tips for deployment. It's the theme of this presentation. Um, first, set up, a, set up automated enrollment and have all devices flow in that way. Uh, make sure that you have either an Apple school account or an Apple business manager account, um, and make sure that all devices are being purchased uh, from Apple, either directly or through a reseller so that they're being added to those accounts. Uh, again, you know, there's a theme here. Only enforce minimum requirements during enrollment. Install core business critical applications first, let end users decide what they need afterwards. Uh, keep enrollment streamlined um, as much as possible to save time, uh, especially for folks who are working remote on slower internet connections. That's kind of a thing nowadays. Um, load up self-service with all the goodies and anything else they may need. And finally, go through your enrollment process yourself. Do it regularly. 
make that as straightforward and enjoyable as possible. Don't get too clever. Uh, don't make it too complicated. Uh, treat this like continuous integration for Mac admins. Dog food your own processes. Make sure that they don't drive you crazy because if they're doing that, they're definitely driving your users crazy. All right. So we're still looking through our Jamfro server. We talked about management. We talked about organization and deployment. So now let's look at some important settings. Settings are the real nitty gritty behind what Jamfro can do. And that is a lot. Um, there are a lot of settings in Jamf Pro, and as you're going to notice, they're ordered very intentionally on the page. Note that when you look at the full list of Jamf Pro settings, that system settings are at the top and accounts and SSO are the first items. Access and SSO are super important. Make sure you know who has access to your Jamf Pro server and why. Configure SSO and manage all access that way. But have a root account that you can use at the failover URL as, if you need to with a password that's rotated regularly and stored securely. Have a password store for that and other things. One password, LastPass, Bitwarden, Secret Server. There are a bunch of options out there. Hopefully your org has one. Make sure you're using it. And as far as the server itself is concerned, um, all right, admittedly, I have some bias here because I was on the cloud team, but our best practice really is that you should use Jam Cloud if you can. Don't bog yourself down with uh, self-hosting Jam Pro itself. Um, self-hosting requires an entire set of system administrator skills um, and requirements that are, uh, at least to me, completely separate from client management. If Jam Cloud is an option, delegate all the responsibilities for management, maintenance, upgrades, patching, all that stuff over to Jam and focus on your users. Focus, focus on the people, not the, not the servers. Cosign. Also in settings and showing a little bit of my bias here, self-service. In particular, self-service branding. Jamf Pro can automatically brand self-service for you and you definitely should. Self-service is one of the few Jamf Pro components that an end user interacts with on their device. So establish trust, show that it's a source of truth for what they need, make it a recognizable using company imagery. It's pretty easy to make it look awesome because it already does. So it's well worth a few minutes to upload cool company graphics to customize it for your organization. In terms of other things that are super important, we could spend all day talking about this, but we're gonna hit on global management settings real quick. Know them. When does your push notification sort of expire? What account was used to create it? Um, our best practice tip here, for all of these settings, add renewal dates for important certs and services and add the account information for them to a team calendar or a wiki. Don't get caught off guard by the impending expiration of an important cert. Centralize this information so that you can take vacations and enjoy them. And make sure you review your enrollment customization and user initiated enrollment settings on a regular basis. That's text that your users are seeing as they enroll. So make sure that the text that's there makes sense. All right, quick recap. We've gone through Jamf Pro Server. We've looked at opportunities to make improvement. We came up with some ideas for best practice for management, organization, deployment, and settings of the server. It's all starting to come together. Awesome. And we obviously very much looked at the forest, not the trees here, because we are already running out of time. But before we move on to our next category, we want to mention one more thing. Bryson, Stay do you remember you. Scenario 2? The, the burrito. What happened to the burrito? Yes. Whatever happened? Whatever happened to the burrito? Well, if you follow the framework we just talked through, but in the opposite order, you'll build out a pretty good Jamf Pro instance full of Bryson. Settings. Secure and intentional settings like those. Secure and intentional settings. Be declarative. Modern deployment strategies. <laughs> clear organization of your server, and then a thoughtful, human-friendly management strategy. Love it. Just flip so script. both both scenarios are covered by this framework. You just follow them in different directions. It's genius, right? So we've talked through our Jamfro instance. We found places to make improvements and apply best practice, but how do we maintain it? Glad you asked. Let's get to it. 
Ah, governance. Everybody wants to talk about governance. So this is our second category for our uh, Jamf Pro best practice framework, which is, again, it's all of the non jamf bits, um, but it's all the stuff that you need to keep um, on top of as you're to uh, implement these concepts for the long term. So quickly review, the four topics that we're covering under governance are documentation and data, maintenance and cleanup, change management, which is, again, you're never escaping it, and then the toolbox. The best part of the best practice framework requires this part requires familiarity with non jappy stuff like Bryson mentioned. Um, stuff that may be out of your control, like app software and services. This likely includes internal documentation, ticketing system, change control procedures, data warehouse, productivity suites, information security guidelines. Could go on and on and on and on. There's a lot. We're going to try to focus on a few here for you to run after. Um, but the main thing is making sure you know what's at disposal at your company and to talk to your coworkers and make friends with the admins of your ticketing and documentation systems because they are great resources and can help you. So we'll start our conversation around non champy stuff with my personal favorite topic, documentation and data. When it comes to documentation, having some is better than none, having great documentation is the best. When it comes to data, Jamf Pro has a lot of it, but what can and should you do with it? As you figure out best practice for your Jamf Pro server, make sure you can answer the following questions. Where is team documentation stored? Where is customer facing documentation stored? How do end users find the documentation? What should require documentation for approval? And what should be documented? A quick list of things that should be documented, projects, runbooks, deployment strategies, naming conventions, OS readiness docs, training resources, anything and everything. The more, the better, truly. And as you start going through documentation and making your own, make sure that you include plenty of screenshots. You use text formatting to establish hierarchies in your documentation, which many CMSs have templates to help with this, so look for those. Make sure docs are accessible and work with the screen reader and provide transcripts and or captions for any videos or graphics in your documentation. Be transparent about your process, how your server is configured, and write for an audience who may know Jampro as well as you. Now let's talk about data, and unfortunately not the one from Star Trek as much as we love him. So you've got some options for the data that you've got in Jampro, and there is a lot of data in Jampro, as Emily alluded to. Um, the easy button is that there are some dashboarding options built right into the product. So you log in and you can go through your server and click boxes and you can add things, uh, things that are relevant to your deployments like policies and profiles. You can have statuses right on the main page when you log in, patch titles, patch policy, uh, patch policies, uh, the reports for those. Again, check boxes. You can just have them appear automatically without having to think too much about it. Um, you know, add a bunch of things that spark joy for you as an admin so that when you're Logging in, you can uh, admire a hopefully very green dashboard and not one that's peppered with yellows and reds. And as far as the rest of the data, data, data that's, you know, everywhere inside Jam Pro, user information, device information, um, policy data, all that stuff. Um, best practice around that, your org probably has some sort of data aggregation tool. If it does, if it doesn't, you know, maybe it's something to look into. There are a lot of options out there, um, but see what you have available. Work with the teams that own those tools at, for being able to ingest that data. Jamf, Jamf Pro has APIs. It has webhooks to admit data. Like there's a lot of avenues for you to take advantage of. Um, a lot of these data aggregation uh, tools have uh, built-in utilities for it. Maybe you have to write one. Maybe the, somebody in the community has already written one you can take advantage of. Um, I'm actually going to plug Tom, eh, as much as I want to, I'm going to plug Tom Larkin's session that he's doing here at JNIC as well. Uh, he works over at Snow. It's being data-driven, number 1161. Um, and he's going to show off how to make how he does data-driven solutions, uh, Jam Pro and Snowflake, as well as other systems. Uh, there's... So much cool stuff you can do. And I know Tom is going to touch on some fun stuff. Um, now, we talked very briefly about documentation and data. 
just because we want you to be thinking about it. What we really need to talk about is maintenance and cleanup. Questions you need to ask yourself about maintenance and cleanup. How often do you clean up what's in Jamf Pro? How do you determine what to remove? What's your cleanup process? What's your actual mechanism to clean up what's in Jamf Pro? And how often do you check for and remove deprecated features? Um, if you can't answer these questions, why? And what can you do to make sure things are tidy in your Jamf Pro instance long term? Our tip here, add something to your team calendar on a recurring basis to look at all of the management and organizational components within your Jamf Pro instance that we've talked about and see if it's all needed. And if there's stuff that isn't needed, remove it. If you're shipping data off to a data repository at your company, there shouldn't be a need to retain all those things indefinitely. Tools like Spruce, which is shown here, can make this process less manual. And it even has some cute emojis. I am not exactly sure what Poodle Fart is, and I love it even though with a 52% rating, I'm guessing it's not supposed to be good, but it's a poodle fart, so it's really cute. I like that. Um, we're blasting through. Next, we need to talk about change management. Um, you can't escape it. You need to have it, define it, and follow it. If you don't have any change management for Jamf Pro, there are some things that you can start doing to make sure you're following best practice. Create all production-ready policies and EAs in a disabled state and obtain approval through your change control system before enabling. Profiles should be uploaded with no scope and tested with the test group before deploying to a general population of devices. Deployment should go through approval with a clearly defined scope. For things like scripts, EAs, and profiles that have description and note fields, add change approval numbers and implementation details there for future reference. And there are tools out there like it to JSS that can help automate the intake of scripts and EAs. And I'll just make a note, get to JSS hasn't been updated in a while. The last time I checked it out still worked. And at the very least, it can be a starting point for you to adopt approvals and continuous integration with Jam Pro for those important pieces. Yeah, so we're gonna rush through here, but the final piece of the best pre best practice framework is knowing what tools are at your disposal, the toolbox. Uh, if you're not sure where to find those tools, uh, what I recommend is the Jamf Marketplace. Go there, browse what's available, see what see what works with things that you might already have in your organization. Um, Spruce and get to JSS are ones that we've already mentioned. There's a lot of immediate value in, in those and what they offer. Both are designed to work with Jamf Pro to automate away a lot of, that, a lot of those menial tasks. Let's see here. Um, there's also the MUT. MUT is super popular. Um, it allows somebody uh, to do mass updating on records inside Jamf Pro, and it's a it's a nice native Mac app. Patchbot, Nudge, Nudge is really great. Um, there's so many others. Uh, Jamf Migrator, Jam Jar, uh, Wonder is in there now. Uh, Profile Creator, like the list goes on. Go there, browse around, see what see what's going to give you value. Uh, but let's also not forget the single most beneficial, greatest resource that you do have at your disposal, which is the Mac admins community as a whole. Uh, the Mac admins Slack, indispensable. There's over 5,000 Mac admins using it daily. Uh, they chat, they share information, they help each other, they just enjoy each other's company. It's a great place to be. Uh, you can join right now at macadmins.org. Uh, Jamf Nation got a refresh not too long ago. It's beautiful. It is the largest Mac admins um, uh, community on, or J the, it's one of the largest Mac admins community online. Um, and you also have Jamf, uh, Jamf account portal now to manage all the things that are related to your Jamf, to your organization and Jamf itself. Um, really, best practice here. Um, you've got a support team, both at Jamf, at Apple, their resources to you set up recurring meetings with them, stay in regular correspondence, uh, keep up to date with all the developments that are happening in Apple management, because when they come, they come in waves. Um, embrace the steady stream of awesome that is the, it, that is the Mac Evans Slack as well. Um, you're going to feel empowered to do great things without the fear of reinventing the wheel every single time challenge to tackle. Oh, all right. Let's recap. All right. We're already over. We'll do this quickly. So. For our framework, it has two main components. 
where you focus on in Jamf Pro and how you maintain it with items outside of Jamf Pro. So you focus on management, organization, deployment, and settings. And you maintain it with Bryson. Documentation and data. Maintenance and cleanup. Change management. And your toolbox. When you're ready to give this framework a try on your own Jamfro instance, whether it's new or already configured, regardless of scenario, check the session handouts for a guide you can print out and follow. Breaks down the topics we talked about today, includes questions to answer with checkboxes to track your progress. There's also a doc with links, so check that out too. Though I do want to give a little screen time to some of the links that we mentioned today, but don't worry, these are in the link handout so you can get them there. And that's it. We hope you found this approach helpful and can see yourself using it on your own Jamf Pro implementation. See you in the chat. Thank you.